Hi, I'm Jason from Golf Sewing and Vacuum Centers, and I'm here to talk to you today about long arm quilters. Many people love to quilt, and in the past they felt like maybe they couldn't do the long arm portion of that project. But yet, we're here today to tell you that you can do it. They can fit in any size home. And so to do that, we're going to start talking about the frames, the machines, and then of course stitch regulation, which all of you want. So if we look at the frames for a second, this is a frame that in the past everyone thought you had to have 10 to 15 feet available and it would cost $10,000. This long arm right here is a five foot frame. It can quilt any size quilt because it's a clamp frame. So we have several models of it. They're, they range between four and five feet and they can quilt a king size quilt because what happens is you quilt it in sections. So you're able to clamp your quilt, you're able to quilt that section, move it and continue on. And so that's a nice way for someone that says, I only have four feet, five feet that I can designate to a quilter, you can still quilt your own quilts. Now if you have more room, it is a little bit easier when you have a frame like this. Now we have this set up as a showroom size. This frame goes four foot, eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, whatever size quilt you want to make, you set this frame up. If you have the space, the advantage of this type of a frame is that you roll the quilt, you quilt it as you go, and it's a finished product. You're not having to unclamp it and move it. So it's certainly a little bit easier, but again, if you only have the space, that's a great starter system. If you have space for this uh, type of a quilter here, you're able to now decide what size you're going to do quilts. You set it up that size, and now you can quilt the entire thing. So picking your frame is going to be your first choice on, on space. After that comes the machine. So we have anything from a small 9-inch arm machine, like a home machine that you can put on a frame like that and quilt your own quilts. That particular style frame, you can actually put uh, your home machine that you have now on it and do your own quilting for just a few hundred dollars. But should you want a larger machine, then you take a step. The first machine that we recommend on a frame like this is going to be a 15-inch. So 15, 16 inch, like there's a 16 inch model right there that you can see, that's about the starter long arm machine that you can go to. And so when you think about the size, when we talk about inches, so 15, 16, 18, 20, they go all the way up from there. But it's from the needle to the inside throat of the machine. That's what's gonna determine how large you want it. And of course, the type of quilting you do will help determine which machine is gonna be right for you. If uh, I'm just free motion quilting, I can't reach 26 inches. So if I'm just going to free motion, maybe I don't need a 26 inch machine. But if you're going to go computerized, well now having a 26 inch machine means I could make several passes on my quilt before I advance it, which saves you time and it's easier than to work with. So you just pick the machine that is going to be right for the type of quilting you do. And that's why we carry, you know, a dozen different models, sizes, and variations to help you pick the machine that's right for you. So once you've determined the frame, and now you've determined the machine, one of the last things that's really important to look at on your uh, long arm quilter is the stitch regulator. And so the stitch regulator is something that as your machine moves front to back and side to side, there's generally speaking an encoder. And the encoder is what's going to track your movement. Now, various machines on the market will use optical encoders or cameras to track movement. Others use wheels that track the thread, and that depending on the amount of thread that it uses, it adjusts the machine speed. But in general, the most popular stitch regulation system is going to be encoders. And so with this encoder system, you know, it's going to then move front to back on the machine side and left and right on the carriage side. So it's important that those encoders track properly. And so there's different quality of encoders. So as you're comparing machines and frames, you also want to look at that because the stitch regulation is an integral part of the machine and how well it's going to function for you. So the, the stitch regulator making sure that it's spring loaded, it's engaged, um, that it's really tracking well. And you can tell when you sew on the machine because when you start and stop the machine, you will see the stitches start and stop in the corners, out of the corners. So perhaps you have a, a very basic model with a stitch regulator. You come into that point and you might pack an extra couple stitches in. You come out of that point, you have a little longer stitch. So the precision of the encoders is something you really want to consider as you're doing your you know, investigation of a long arm.
Hi, I'm Jason from Golf Sewing and Vacuum Centers. I'm here to talk to you today about maintenance for your long arm. You know, it's very important that you continue to maintain it, otherwise it will affect your stitching. So, one of the most important things to maintain on your long arm is going to be your needle. So, making sure that you change the needle. Now, when you uh, talk about changing a needle, you have to understand the parts of a needle. So, we'll take just a minute to explain that for you, and you may be aware of some of these, but with the needle you have a groove that runs the length of the front of the needle and on the back side you have a scarf. So when your machine is quilting, the, the hook underneath picks up the thread by going through that scarf. So it's extremely important that your needle is in nice and straight and square to the machine. So your, your groove is going to run the lengthwise down the face of your machine and on the back side that scarf should be nice and uh, square to the back side. So changing your needle uh, every quilt is important. On a home sewing machine they say every eight hours um, and on a long arm you should at least do the same as well. Uh, there are some types of needles out there they, they talk about uh, that you can go two, three, four, five, even ten quilts on a needle but a needle is one of the cheapest things you can replace. They're less than a dollar and it will affect your quilting you know, dramatically if it's not right. So that's very important. Also, too, people will tend to use a needle maybe until it starts to dull or, well, what can happen is if that needle's dull and you hit that seam and break one needle, well, now you got your machine out of time and you have a major repair on your hands. So saving yourself a buck isn't worth it. So changing needles regularly is extremely important. The second thing that's uh, really important is maintaining the cleanliness of your bobbin case and your hook and oiling that. So underneath the machine, you want to make sure that uh, when you pull your bobbin case out to change the bobbin, uh, you should brush out. Uh, we have a lint brush that is, um, looks almost like a paintbrush, and so it's very long, get in there and sweep a majority of it out. Uh, people want to talk about canned air and things like that, which is fine. You blow the canned air in there, and yeah, you're going to blow some of that lint out, but you're also going to blow some of it back in. So being able to maintain that is, is really important by brushing most of it out, and then either vacuum the last little bit or blow it out, whatever's left. Um, but then uh, once you do that, you want to make sure that you oil that hook. Every bobbin, every other bobbin at least, you want to put one drop of oil on the hook. So where do you put that drop of oil? It's important that you understand the components of the hook. So your bobbin is going to go into your bobbin case. Your bobbin case is going to snap into that basket. That's what holds the bobbin case. And it's stationary. It's fixed. Then your hook is going to spin around that basket. And it's that uh, place is where you want to put the drop of oil between the hook and that stationary basket that's what needs to be maintained with oiling so again that's very very important um, so those are just a couple of very very basic but extremely important things to maintaining the machine side of it now there's one other thing maintenance wise that's very important to maintain and that's with the frame and that's your uh, wheels so making sure that your uh, machines wheels your carriage if you have a home machine on a carriage the front to back movement and the side to side movement. So all of those wheels and the tracks you need to make sure, sure that are, are very, very clean and well maintained because it's amazing one little piece of thread you bump up against and it hesitates and that can show on your quilt. So making sure that you clean those regularly. So those are just a few of the most important tips for maintaining your long arm. Again, any questions, call us at Gall Sewing and Vac or see us at GallSewingVac.com.
Hi, I'm Jason from Golf Sewing and Vacuum Centers, and I want to talk to you about stitch regulation with your long arm quilting machines. We know stitch regulation is important, especially when we're beginners, where when we move, we want that stitch to be consistent. We don't, we're already worried enough about where we're going. We don't want to worry about how fast we're going. So letting the machine control it is very important. And there's two main types of stitch regulation. And every machine may label them slightly different, but there's precision and there's crews. And you may wonder when you use one or the other. So precision stitch regulation is when you turn the machine on and nothing happens. You move, the machine will move. You stop, it stops. That's great for a beginner who is getting used to where they're going and what they're doing, but it's also really nice for someone doing ruler work because now when you're running along that ruler, you'll stop, turn your ruler, continue on, stop, turn your ruler, continue, and then you're not going to sit there and continue to stitch in place. So precision stopping when you stop is a nice way to quilt a lot. But cruise is also very important to have. Cruise is what there only was 10, 15 years ago when stitch regulators came out. And what it means is when you turn the machine on, the machine's needle immediately starts going. Now it's going at a slow pace, and then when you take off moving, it's going to keep your stitches even. When you stop, the needle's going to continue to move. And if you let it, let it sit there, it will either tie a knot or it could break your thread. And so people sometimes shy away from cruise. But it's important to understand why cruise is so important. Because when you're quilting, and you're coming around a corner and you go into a point and you come out of a point, if you're in precision and that needle stops in the up position, it doesn't drop that needle and tack that point. So with cruise, I can come in, I can tack that point, I can come back out, you'll get very crisp, very clean points. Now another reason that cruise is nice, and some machines even have the ability to control the speed of the cruise, so you can speed it up or slow it down depending on the type of movement you're doing, so when you're in stitch regulation and you have it in cruise mode and you have the cruise set maybe at 25% or you have it a little bit higher of a speed, what can happen is you can be doing a, some meandering and then all of a sudden you get to a small area and you want to do some stippling, little micro stippling, you want to do some pebbling. Well, if you have a stitch regulator on for, for doing small little pebbling, what ends up happening is your pebbles are square and boxy. They're not smooth and round. So when you have it into the cruise mode, it will transition between your regulation into the cruise for that purpose. So you can be using the stitch regulator. Everything's great. You get into that small area. Now I can have the machine slow down. It turns to speed control. I can have beautiful round little curves, little micro stippling, little pebbling, come right back out and be perfectly stitch regulated again. So again, two types of stitch regulation, they're both important to be able to use. And so again, if you have questions, see Gall Sewing and Vacuum Centers for all your long arm needs.